Mic check. Does that sound fine or is it really loud? Uh, it sounds fine to me. Okay. All right. Clean your ears, girl. Clean your ears, girl. <laughs> Freaking speak. Speak Clean clearly ears. if you're going to insult Clean your me. ears. Okay. Um. Hi, everybody. Honestly, you know what's funny is I feel like sometimes we just like ramble in the beginning, but I never know like what Michaela's going to put in as mm-hmm. the beginning mm-hmm. or not. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's all a big It's gamble. always a surprise. We don't know. It's a big surprise. Risk. Um. So, hello. <laughs> I was going to ask you a question. Okay. Because I found this Teen Vogue list of juicy questions to ask teen your friend. Teen Vogue? Teen Throwback. Vogue. Because we are teenagers on the inside. Okay. Um, <laughs> what's the most bizarre text you've ever received? Bizarre? Bizarre text, text you've ever received. <sighs> I'm not good at stuff like Ash. this. I get, my brain goes blank. I can't even think of I can't even Nothing think of this. Nothing pops in. Anything that's just like, what is the most or your favorite? Really? Like, I can't even, I don't, I just, I can't, my brain, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Let's be honest, Ash. Yes, How sir. important is it to you to smell good? So important. Honestly? It is. It's one of my things. Even like, if I don't I have do, to smell good. Yeah, even if I don't do my hair and makeup, yep. perfume on, deodorant on, like I have to smell good, smelly lotion, like all yep. the things. And if we're real, our underarms aren't the only place we have odor. And that is why we're so excited to tell you about Lumi Whole Body Deodorant for pits, privates, and beyond. Whole Body Deodorant, the first of its kind. Lumi is seriously safe to use anywhere on your body. We're talking pits, under boobs, thigh folds, belly buttons, butt cracks, everything, even your feet. It's clinically proven to block odor all day long and control odor for up to 72 hours. And I bet you're asking yourself how, so let me tell you. Unlike some deodorants that try to mask odor with a fragrance, Lumi is formulated and powered by mandelic acid to stop odor before it starts. More like a pre-deodorant. Let me tell you guys, I got this product a few weeks ago. I actually took it camping this past weekend and it was incredible. I use the body deodorant as well as the body wipes. They're good for all over your body, even your private parts. And it was so great. Felt like taking a shower while I was camping. I actually really, really, really enjoyed this. Lumi Starter Pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice like mini body wash and deodorant wipes, and free shipping. As a special offer for our listeners, new customers get $5 off a Lumi Starter Pack with code ADVICE at lumideodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit lumideodorant.com and use code ADVICE. Here is your free beauty and lifestyle hack for this episode. FabFitFun is the best way to save money on beauty and lifestyle products from the brands you love. You can discover new brands and even treat yourself to something nice without overpaying. Guys, as a FabFitFun member, you get exclusive access to shop thousands of curated products from top lifestyle products and brands like Fenty, Kate Spade, Glossier, and many more. Forget this, guys. Up to 70% off. 70! That's huge! So what's their secret? With over 1 million members, FabFitFun helps brand growth by placing massive orders with big promotions. In exchange, the brands offer up early access, exclusive drops, and steep discounts on the most sought-after products. Now, I am not new to FabFitFun. I have loved them for years. Literally all of my favorite products are available at FabFitFun for such a steep discount. Sign up at fabfitfun.com slash unsolicited. You can customize your box and get access to discounts up to 70% off on brands like Fenty, Free People, and Our Place, just to name a few. Not in love with this season's options? Take the credit to shop their exclusive flash sales of up to 70% off and save on the biggest name brands out there. If you join FabFitFun as a new seasonal member right now, You'll also get 20% off your membership, so your first box is only $47.99 for up to a $300 value per box. But only while supplies last. FabFitFun boxes sell out, so join the FabFitFun today and save at fabfitfun.com slash unsolicited. fabfitfun.com slash unsolicited. I, was I don't just know. Be Final quiet answer. I don't you, know. Let you start. Like instantly, Panicking. something came in my mind. Really? Um, okay. Well, let me try to share? do. Well, you know mine. It's the. Is, do I? The butt. The butt oh. text that oh. that guy sent. 
listen, I think you have a much more exciting life than I do. Um, <laughs> because I've never received any kind of out of nowhere text. Well, how fun. How exciting. You've never, a guy's never just like, you've never opened your phone and randomly you're just like staring at a body part? Nope. Never. Nope. Why do but I, I do all the I weirdos? do think I give, I give off don't. <laughs> Not like you give off, well. <laughs> give me. Not that you give off that, but I don't. I, I've never, I've, I've never, never been more offended in my life. Well, I say I, the reason. No. <laughs> to clarify, I don't think that you're putting that vibe off. Thank I think you. you have bad luck in that area. Thank you. Um, but I do. I have been told on multiple occasions from girls, from guys, from everyone that I have a resting face and I don't communicate very clearly over text message. So I do think that that any guy who might want to send me something like that or have wanted to send me something like that just did not feel safe to because <laughs> I might mm-hmm. have put off very not interested in you yeah. even if I was you know what's not crazy, that I wanted though? a picture I'm gonna stop talking now yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna just I'm gonna I'm gonna roll past you <laughs> yeah. um you know what's crazy though mm-hmm. anytime I've gotten something like that it's been totally like it's like I open my phone and a hand reaches out and just slaps me across my eyeball I would think so and it's never been like it led up to that Mm. it's always been like I'm like tell me about where your family's from and then it's just like dick pic yeah and I think it is the most aggressive thing Mm -hmm. I will block you immediately also the balls that it takes literally (laughs) (laughs) pun intended I didn't plan that, but pun intended. The balls that it takes to assume that that's wanted without any kind of foreplay, any kind of lead up to it is like monumental size. That's wild. Also, like, you want me, you don't even, we haven't even exchanged any type of conversation to where you don't even know my last name. You trust who I am. (laughs) Like, I could be anybody. Have you heard of screenshots? Yeah. Like you don't get you're just you just yeah like butt guy the amount of people that we have yeah. shown <laughs> and I'm I including know. we because I have started a lot of those conversations I know uh, yeah this poor guy yeah but also like don't don't I don't want to wake up no. to a text from you three months after I told you I don't want to talk to you mm-hmm. with a picture of your full backside telling me huh, look at this funny bruise where'd that come from <laughs> you're not showing me your bruise you're not showing me your bruise no let's no. get it straight no. Let's get it straight. He got a thrill of sending you that photo. It's just, I don't know what it is. Mm -mm. And it's so funny because I like, if you know me, (laughs) like, I mean, I'm crazy in a lot of ways. But like, as far as like that area, like, I'm just not the person. I'm not the audience for Mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So it's just so funny when like it happens and I'm like. Read the room. What did I say? What did I do? Girls. I'm sure girls do it too. But like, read the room. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Anyways, um, <laughs> what did we? Okay, well, guys, uh, Taryn walked in and I didn't recognize her today. Oh no! Because she walked in with a monster in her <laughs> hand. I am in my like full bro mode She's right now. She's in her dirt biker. I'm gonna crush this can on my head so hard <laughs> <laughs> when I finish. <laughs> Energy. <laughs> I know. It's sugar free too, which is just like the worst combo. I was, I was telling I was telling them that I recently had a conversation with my boyfriend and his friend and about how their go to road trip snack is a monster and meat sticks. And I was like, that is the that nastiest makes you want to throw up. most like like cholesterol will give you a heart attack by the age of 50 snack and they were like I know but like you'll stay awake <laughs> it's like yeah it's I bet the, you will it's the like oil coated mouth feeling Ooh. chased by a monster that Ooh. just yeah it does something to you it, it really it'll get you through your 15 hour yeah. drive <laughs> you know what my go to road trip if I'm if I'm like I'm falling asleep and I need something mm-hmm. is sunflower seeds because it keeps yes. your brain like busy because you're like yes. focusing on whatever. Yes, I That's just recently did uh, a 16 hour drive to Colorado and I brought pistachios. Oh, and it was great because I like it was like I was listening to podcasts. We were listening to music. I was snapping. The were you s- not driving? No, Jackson drove the whole time. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I was like, I was like, That's I was tricky. like snacking on the on the nuts and. Yeah. And cracking the, it was like something to do. No, it, it gives, was like yeah. I, I wasn't even hungry. I just needed some kind of 
stimulant to yeah, keep yeah, me awake. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that was perfect because no, for sure. it's a perfect snack for that. No, I know. Unless you're driving, then it's hard to. Then it's a little, a little, a little harder. It's hard to snap it. But. Um, <laughs> wow, Ash, I don't even know like what we've talked about. And it's only been six minutes, but I feel like I've been talking to you for like 20 minutes right now. Uh, I don't know if that's a good sign or a bad sign, but I can't tell if that was. I missed you, Ashley. Or I see, I wow, miss Ashley, you. you stopped talking. We haven't seen each other for a couple weeks, um, right? It's been, it's been just like a week. week and a half. Oh, it's been True a week love. and a half. True. <laughs> Okay, stop. Complete my heart. Okay, stop. Okay, well, if you guys are wondering what you're listening to, this is a podcast. Welcome, <laughs> welcome, welcome to unsolicited advice. Should we do, should we do it? What? That's that's Taryn. Oh, I'm Taryn. Yes, and that's Ashley. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that's Ashley. I love starting it differently. Yeah, and seeing if Taryn sometimes. can like pick it up. Yeah, if, where if I'm listening. listening. Um, we are excited to be here with you today you know, you'd think after all this time our intros would be a little more professional no a little more put together not at all i i dare say it's getting worse <laughs> you know yeah it really is but what i love about it is it also is just so fitting to like our podcast for sure and i'm sure these are the intros that people like love the most that I don't would, feel i hope so you know i, I mean so. we hope so because again they keep coming. They keep coming back for more. Uh huh. So they uh, want us. Yeah. Um, what is new <laughs> with you? You went to Colorado. I went to Colorado. You're big. You're a big camping girl now. I camp. I camp now. Yeah. Um, there's. This has been like a good year coming up to this, but uh, I camp out in the in the no man's lands. Yeah, like you're like in the wilderness. No bathrooms. Yeah. That's the most shocking part. That is me. the most shocking. Mm-hmm. If you know me at all. That is the most shocking part. That's the one thing Can that I is probably ask a question. The one thing that's probably kept me from camping in the past. Can I ask you a question? <sighs> has it happened yet? It has. <gasps> when? Multiple times. Really? Now. Yeah. And uh, I'm so proud of you. Thanks. <laughs> it was the first time. Was well. So it's it happened. It, it happened when I was a kid, and okay, then but that I feel count. like I went through. I didn't care as much back then. Yeah. And then I feel like I went through puberty and all of a sudden I cared a lot. Yeah. And then, so I haven't ever since then. And then um, this year it finally happened. Like I literally would not go to the bathroom. No, yeah. Because I, know. I didn't want to deal with that. I'm so proud of you. Um, and I, I, do, I do it now. <laughs> I hate this. Even the fact that we're talking about this, growth. All around growth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Proud of you. Yep. Yep. Uh, you, all, you just need wipes. Yeah. There's like, yeah. So, anyways, can we change it. the subject? Yeah, of course, of course, of course. I'm sweating. Ask me how I am. <laughs> Taryn, how are you? I'm great. Uh, I went camping too, different version, but uh, <laughs> we went. My parents have been on this like RV kick, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which growing that fits up, for their age. It does. It's, it's very uh, stereotypical, I yes. guess, for adults that but, age. Fun fact, hmm. I actually grew up with an RV. Like hmm. my my family used to vacation at this like little park in um Idlewild, like up the mountain. And like our we used to do like Easter there and like vacations and it was a huge part of my childhood. So just recently they were like, ah, oh, we kind of miss it and they wanted to start doing it again. And so they've been like renting them and just kind of getting their foot into like what they want to buy again and I went up with them and it was so like nostalgic and just relaxing and it was crazy because none of my other nobody else in my family could come so it was just literally me and my two parents which was like interesting too um but it was so much fun it was so relaxing and I I didn't like post on socials like I just totally let myself like veg out and relax yeah I feel great yeah yeah I feel amazing I feel like that's why I've been loving camping so much is no signal can't post like and I go with my boyfriend who's not into socials anyway so it's like we'll take a couple pics for the mems and that's that's genuinely it no I love it and I always I come back so amped for like work yeah, because you're like mentally reset. Yeah, like I like woke up early this morning, couldn't wait to go to the gym. Like, so excited for like podcasting day and like mm-hmm. made making my list and being productive today. And I guarantee you, it's because I fully unplugged. Yeah, for this past week. Well, if you, you think know? about it, like social media, like regular jobs, you work your nine to five. When you're off work, you're off work, and mm-hmm. then 
you know, Friday's Friday and then you have the weekend. So you yeah. have all these like moments in the day or time to like check out. And with social media, it's really easy to like not feel that like because you're always trying to like post a story yeah. or, you know, answer an email or you're checking your post to see how it's doing. And yeah. and it's very hard to like you don't go through the weekend like the weekend you want to post a lot because everyone's like home and chill. And yeah, so yeah, yeah. it is like I think to build in little times like that is mentally healthy to like just clear absolutely i mean i got back and yesterday was like i had a full day off yesterday and everything in me i actually filmed half of a um getting back into my routine reel and i filmed part part of it and then the whole day i was just dragging and i didn't want to do it and then i was finally like ashley then don't like if you're not going to fully do this then let's just not and like enjoy your rest day and prep for like monday yeah um and i ended up not finishing it and I'm totally okay with that yeah, but I, it you. was an active it had to be a choice of like okay well then let's not do it yeah and let's like fully relax let's do some laundry let's like open the mail mm-hmm. and like do all those things to prep for the week and I am so glad I did that because I just woke up ready to go today yeah that changed the game for me um obviously when I was really struggling with like lack of motivation now in hindsight I know it was because of my thyroid but during that time, I was like beating myself up because I was like, wow, I just like was so, I thought I was just so lazy and I was like, what is wrong with you? And I would hear like you and Alicia like get up and work out and like go do stuff and I couldn't get out of my bed, Mm -hmm. you know? And I remember hearing something where someone was saying, if you hit one of those moments, instead of just battling the whole time and feeling guilty the whole time, to to decide like okay either I'm gonna push through and like do something or I'm gonna say okay then I'm gonna take this time I'm gonna intentionally just give myself like the next two hours to like veg out watch Netflix and no guilt attached like Mm -hmm. I'm being intentional yeah and then at the end of that then you get up and you go but it's the cycle of like oh I should get up okay one more episode and then you feel like crap after that episode so then you watch one more and It's like the cycle. So being intentional and like you just said you Mm -hmm. did of like, okay, I'm not feeling this right now. Yeah. So I'm going to just intentionally make the choice. Like I'm going to take it easy and then reset and then I'll hit it hard tomorrow. Like I think that's really valuable. Yeah. Because there's like there's there's laziness and then there's like just not in the right mindset to be productive or not not in the right mindset to do it efficiently. And it's like, okay, well, if this is something that can be pushed a little bit then like maybe give yourself a chance to like take a nap yeah yeah or like have a coffee and like brainstorm a list of how you're gonna that's so important for me like a, having a to-do list like helps me like physically see what needs to get done and in what order mm-hmm. and if I don't do that then I feel like I'm all over the place so sometimes like taking a longer morning and taking the time to do that is just so much more love it. impactful wow Wow, just, apparently just someone thought, needed to, to hear that. Yeah. Someone needed to hear that because mm-hmm. that was I like did. out of the blue. Um, so you're welcome, whoever needed to hear that. Today's episode is brought to you by Lumi. Let's be honest, Ash. Yes, how important sir. is it to you to smell good? So important. Honestly? It is. It's one of my things. Even like, if I don't I have do, to smell good. Yeah, even if I don't do my hair and makeup, yep. perfume on, deodorant on, like I have to smell good, smelly lotion, like all yep. the things. All the things. And if we're real, our underarms aren't the only place we have odor. And that is why we're so excited to tell you about Lumi Whole Body Deodorant for pits, privates, and beyond. Whole Body Deodorant, the first of its kind. Lumi is seriously safe to use anywhere on your body we're talking pits under boobs thigh folds belly buttons butt cracks everything even your feet lumi is created by an OBGYN who saw firsthand how normal bo was being misdiagnosed and mistreated it's clinically proven to block odor all day long and control odor for up to 72 hours And I bet you're asking yourself how, so let me tell you. Unlike some deodorants that try to mask odor with a fragrance, Lumi is formulated and powered by mandelic acid to stop odor before it starts. More like a pre-deodorant. Let me tell you guys, I got this product a few weeks ago. I actually took it camping this past weekend and it was incredible. I use the body deodorant as well as the body wipes. They're good for all over your body, even your private parts. And it was so great. Felt like taking a shower while I was camping. I actually really, really, really enjoyed this. 
surface. And best of all, it's aluminum-free, baking soda-free, and paraben-free. pH balance for safe use below the belt, and you can choose from a variety of scents like clean tangerine, lavender sage, or a summer one like toasted coconut. Lumi Starter Pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice like mini body wash and deodorant wipes, and free shipping. As a special offer for our listeners, new customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with code advice at lumideodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit lumideodorant.com and use code advice. Uh, shall we get crackalackin'? Shall we? Yes, we shall. I'm going to open my monster. Ooh, ASMR. Oh, I'm not going to lie. That shot in my eye and it definitely <laughs> burnt a little bit. <laughs> Take a sip for us. Ew. Take a sip. I'm going to do it so gross. <laughs> okay, well, that went right in the Choking lungs. Choking on it. How's it taste? Um, great. Like Skittles. <laughs> I will say. Out of all the monsters. Oh, it's so good. The it white like one is, is superior to to all of them. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's go ahead and get into tearing it ups. Tearing it ups are my favorite part of the podcast where you guys send in funny stories and we all laugh together. I'm mm-hmm. not going to tell you the title, um, but I am going to take a moment to tell the listener, our listeners, uh, if you have a funny story that has happened to you in the past, recent or a long time ago or to a friend of yours or to a family <laughs> member, please take the time to write it in because we love funny stories. Okay. Yes, please. Here we go. Did you just sing because I sang? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, keep going. I, I don't appreciate wondering. you calling me I out like that. I was wondering. It wasn't <laughs> okay. a negative okay, thing. Okay. Here we go. Um, okay, they write. Oh, hey, Ash and Taryn. Okay, first of all, I'm going to be basic and start off with the classic. I love you both and your podcast, but truly, I do. Even though I am probably on the younger side of your listeners, she adds in parentheses, I'm 17. Oh, welcome. A lot of your advice has resonated with me and has helped me with my confidence and sense of self. So thank you so much to both of you. For this, I would prefer to remain anonymous, but you guys can know my name. We'll bleep it out for you. Don't worry. Her name's Okay. And she continues, now for my tearing it up. This happened back in February, and I feel that I have finally recovered enough to truly appreciate the hilarious story it has presented me with. (laughs) In January, I broke my foot for the second time. What? Two years in a row from indoor track and was in a cast for eight weeks. The doctor told me that while I was in the cast, I would have to use crutches and absolutely put no weight on my foot during that time. As (laughs) As this was the same injury I had the year prior, I knew that hobbling through school on crutches with a backpack on carrying all my books was absolute hell on earth. Oh, yeah. She adds, picture winter. So I'm in a heavy sweatshirt and sweatpants because school is so cold and only a few minutes to sprint from one class to the next while carrying my backpack full of books, my computer, etc. I instantly hearing that just I felt like the room was closing in on me and I felt claustrophobic (laughs) like that is my actual nightmare that feeling of like it's heavy you're getting like hot and then like there's straps and things like holding you down Uh that will make me like go into like a panic attack it's funny you say that because I immediately pictured my school had this one main hallway we called it the mall because every time in between classes when the bell would ring it was chaos like it was just like the mall so we called it the mall that's so funny yeah because it was just so many people were passing through this one main hallway because that was how you got to the other part of the school yeah um and so every class period 90 percent of us had to walk through the mall and it was just like an you would just see like a wall of kids coming towards you and it was overwhelming at times trying to like bob through the crowds. I can't even imagine. So when she said that, that's all I pictured. Yeah. I was just like, oof, getting through that on crutches. Dude. I would literally just tell my teachers, I'm going to sit and wait for the bell and I'll be five minutes late. I would be like, mom and dad, either (laughs) I get an electric wheelchair or I'm not going to school. There's no way. Well, it's perfect you say that because she continues. Um, While Samuel, she says, um, 
carrying my computer, et cetera, while simultaneously dodging hundreds of students. Um, so she continues, let's just say I definitely worked up a sweat and had to fight for my life in those hallways. <laughs> Anyways, the second time I was injured, I told my doctor there was no way I would be doing that again. So I got one of those knee scooters yes. where the injured foot lays on it and yeah. you push it with the good foot. Those are sick. She adds in parentheses, yes, this was hilarious by itself, but honestly, I did not care at this point, LOL. One of my first days using the scooter, <laughs> I was talking to some of my friends in the hallway before my class and realized that I only had a minute before the late bell rang. Instinctively. <laughs> X Games mode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Instinctively, I took off on my scooter. Now, this scooter can really pick up speed <laughs> on those smooth tile hallways. So I was, she adds in all caps, flying to get there on time. Oh Not going to lie. She adds in parentheses, it was really fun until it wasn't. Uh -oh. As I am almost to my classroom, I look down at my phone and thankfully realize that I am going to make it just on time. And that's when tragedy strikes. As I pass the last set of stairs before my class, my good foot that I was pushing with gets caught on the tile. And you see where this is going. <laughs> dot, dot, oh, dot. No, not the good I, foot. <laughs> yeah, she not the good foot. <laughs> she writes, I go down. Oh, my my metal... <laughs> <laughs> my metal Yeti water bottle not the Yeti from my bag goes flying across the hallway oh, no. the scooter spins out from underneath me and I am left lying oh. sprawled out face down on the linoleum <laughs> <laughs> I'm just picturing the sound yeah. of the Yeti water bottle falling, hitting the lockers, Dude, hitting the window. Those like, are brutal those too. so loud yeah. like you could kill someone with no, one of those bottles absolutely <laughs> <laughs> Um, best of all, I was taken out just as a huge group of my classmates were rushing down the stairs. So quite a few people witnessed my crash. Oh, no. Everyone rushed to me and a few teachers in the hall started calling out to make sure I was okay. <laughs> Embarrassed, I laughed it off as literally five people had to help me off the floor and grab oh. my stuff, which I will note is not easy um, when one leg is out of commission. <laughs> We all rushed to class and still to this day, it is brought up sometimes when my scooter era is remembered. Oh. Students all the way at the other end of the hallway heard the commotion and still remember this event. <laughs> Attached is a crusty picture of me on my scooter at school for visual reference. <laughs> I wish I had a video of the crash, but it was quite a surprise. So no one took one. <laughs> ha ha ha. Anyways, love you both. And then here is a photo of her on her scooter. Oh, I think you look so cute. You look so cute. Poor baby. That's not crusty. That's not crusty at all. You mm -hmm. look amazing. And the fact that you survived two years in a row of a broken foot, that's tough. Yeah. I would have opted for the scooter too. Yeah. My, I would have opted for someone to push me from one class yeah. to the next. <laughs> my mom was on a scooter for a while. And it is funny, like, seeing, like, a grown person just, like, having to hobble yeah. yeah it's just it's just a funny especially the scooters it's just a it's funny to look at like it's not oh absolutely it's no one's fault you know no. it's just it's just funny it so is. the fact that you felt like that i'm so Honey. sorry poor thing but hopefully you are so much better now thank you so much for writing in that was a great story that was so good i mean not good for you at that time True. but obviously True. you're good now mm -hmm. she's you know what it's it's moments like that that humble you yeah you grow from it yeah and it teaches you that is easier to just laugh it mm -hmm. off, you know? Mm -hmm. It's good. Feeling embarrassed is good for you. Yeah. Yeah. Keeps you humble. <laughs> stay humble, fool. <laughs> stay humble, folks. Thought, um, did you say stay humble, fool? Fool. I, yeah, I got stuck on that word, Ashley. Fool? I was trying to say folks, and it came out oh, weird. Got it? <sighs> oh, well. <laughs> It just felt it was my turn to call you out. That's all. No, I no, love it. No, we're fair. I don't know what it is. So my... Well, I have multiple areas of inappropriate laughter. Involuntary. I don't mean to. It just happens. Like at but the worst times? Is that what you're saying? When people fall, I can't yes. help it. Yes. Or people get hurt. And it's like, I know that I shouldn't be laughing. And I'm actually very concerned about the person. Mm -hmm. But I can't. I can't not yeah. laugh. It's really hard for me. Mm -hmm. So that. And then also when people are speaking and they mispronounce words because like they're going so fast. I don't know why that kills me too. So like in college, I would have such a hard time because the professor would say something and I'd just be like, hey. But I was um, hiking in the Narrows this weekend 
and watched this man, like older guy and his wife, like they were hiking and he had a GoPro and mm-hmm. he was trying to like, <laughs> he was trying to film his wife coming up this like rock. But oh, it uh-huh. was funny because it wasn't in like a big hiking area. It was just like off to the side. Um, oh. But he's like getting this like really into this shot that he's getting of yeah. his wife who's like in all her hiking gear. But like, again, it wasn't like a mountain or anything steep. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, she's yeah. just walking with her, <laughs> with her walking sticks. Um, and he's so into the shot. He runs right into a branch. Oh, my god! Like a big branch, like a tree, <laughs> like a thick tree branch. <laughs> and Jackson and I both see it. And both of us laughed out loud. And I like look at him and I was just like, shh. They're gonna. They heard. They yeah, definitely heard yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And I immediately looked away. But it was like it was so funny because he was so into yeah. it. <laughs> and just completely did not see the that's branch. A, I feel like that's when it is the funniest. Though yeah. it's not like like when someone's like skateboarding and falls. You're right. like, oh, are they okay? Because yeah, they're doing something like daring. It's yeah. when someone like my dad this weekend in the RV because the ceilings are so short and yeah. he was in the like little pop out section. So he like grabs the dog and he's like all right guys i'm going to bed and like stands straight up and just nails the ceiling <laughs> yeah. and it was just because it's in that moment where it's like everything's chill like he's just saying good night and going to yeah. bed and i was like oh dad, dad, dad are you okay <laughs> like trying so hard not to laugh because i knew he'd like get mad at me you, are you okay yeah. do you need help but no it's, it's almost it's like the shocking ones that you're like yeah, oh my gosh i could yeah. see him being like i'm fine i'm yeah. fine <laughs> No, he literally didn't say anything, just like held his head for a second and then silently walked into the back room and shut the door. And I was just like dying because I was like, <laughs> just knowing he just your loved. dad makes yeah. that even funnier. <laughs> he was just like, bang. He's just one of the most like put together, right? Serious people. So yeah, that's just really funny. I know. Sorry, I Mr. E. I love you, dad. I don't know if he listens anymore. Uh, yeah, probably not. I'm sure my family, like the other day, Vanessa was like, I'm listening to your podcast. I haven't listened to it in forever. And I always tell them, I'm like, you don't have to. Like, you hear enough from me. I was going to say. I I don't blame you. After four plus years. Right? uh, I I wouldn't expect them to be Mm -hmm. listening to them all. You know who does listen to them all? My mom. Oh, absolutely. (laughs) She gets like weekly updates. Yeah. She'll be like, great episode, guys. Taryn, I love when you said this. And then she'll (laughs) send me like a podcast that talks about that same thing. She's like the cutest. I love her. She's so funny. I love her. Today's episode is sponsored by FabFitFine. Here is your free beauty and lifestyle hack for this episode. FabFitFine is the best way to save money on beauty and lifestyle products from the brands you love. You can discover new brands and even treat yourself to something nice without overpaying. Guys, as a FabFitFine member, you get exclusive access to shop thousands of curated products from top lifestyle products and brands like Fenty, Kate Spade, Glossier, and many more. Forget this, guys. Up to 70% 70% off. 70. 70. That's huge. And these aren't just sample sizes or low quality products or the discounted lines or unsold merch you find at discount stores. So what's their secret? With over 1 million members, FabFitFun helps brand growth by placing massive orders with big promotions. In exchange, the brands offer up early access, exclusive drops, and steep discounts on the most sought after products which means you can enjoy name brand full-size products of your favorites. You can try new brands and ones you've always wanted to try at discounted prices you won't find anywhere else. Now, I am not new to FabFitFun. I have loved them for years. Literally all of my favorite products are available at FabFitFun for such a steep discount, which means I can stock up and be good for the year. So join the shopping membership loved by over 1 million happy customers and named number one by Glamour Magazine for 2023. Sign up at fabfitfun.com slash unsolicited. You can customize your box and get access to discounts up to 70% off on brands like Fenty, Free People, and Our Place, just to name a few. Not in love with this season's options? Take the credit to shop their exclusive flash sales of up to 70% off and save on the biggest name brands out there. If you join FabFitFun as a new seasonal member right now, You'll also get 20% off your membership, so your first box is only $47.99 for up to a $300 value per box. But only while supplies last. FabFitFun boxes sell out, so join the FabFitFun today and save at fabfitfun.com slash unsolicited. fabfitfun.com slash unsolicited.
All right, so my story is titled, Should I Choose Security Over Freedom? Ooh. Honestly, hmm. T. Because that's, that's tough. That you could apply that question over yes. so many areas. hundred percent. Like there's no straight answer. Like even going to a restaurant, should I order what I've eaten before? Yeah. And I know is good and that I'm going to like it. Yeah. Or should I go for this that could be epic or could be disgusting? For me, it's like, do I go with carbonara or the special mm. seafood pasta Ooh. that I could love? Risky, risky. Or could be really bad. Risque. Mm -hmm. Yep. Tough. You know what? You either get it or you don't. If yeah. you're listening thinking we're stupid, then you don't get it. Yeah. But yeah. I know there's people that get it. <laughs> okay. The girl okay. that get it, get it. Yeah. Okay, um, uh, let me just double check. Yes, I can say it. Okay. Hi, Ash and DJ Taryn. DJ Taryn? <laughs> Where's that from? I forget. DJ Taryn. DJ Taryn. What was that was from? from? That a, was from, was that from an episode? I don't remember. I just remember there was a, a, a period of time where people would say DJ Taryn, and I can't was remember it why. when we were during COVID with the roadcaster, and you were... Pressing buttons. Yes. I think it might have been it from was that. that. Yeah. Wow. She Thank you for a, resurrecting that memory. She was on a button. A button. Ash would get so mad at me. Because I'd be on a roll and then all of a sudden she just pressed the applause button and it would just throw well, and me off. I never actually took the time to like memorize what they were. So every time yeah. I would go to push one, <laughs> it was it was very like it was it could be the could applause, be applause or it could, or be, it a could horn. be like a sick beat or it could be like a duck quacking. Like yeah. you, you never knew what you were going to get. We really at a certain point, especially I'm surprised I didn't do this. I should have just like labeled them yeah like i should have taken what five I'm minutes sure. that it would have taken to press each one and then type it out but i know you and you were probably like no i'm not going to do this because it's going to encourage her more to yes. push yes yes <laughs> i'm sure subconsciously i was like you will not i bet subconsciously i said there's a pr there's a solution yeah let's label them yeah. and then immediately i was like you will not label yeah. them <laughs> me and ashley are so opposite in like I feel like our our personalities are very opposite, but weirdly gel together. Yeah. Because we still have like the same humor and For certain sure. things. For sure. But I'm a lot. And either you're in a place where you appreciate that and it eggs you on. Or you're in a place where you're like, if you don't shut up, <laughs> yeah. like I'm literally not going to be your friend anymore. Yeah. <laughs> like It's definitely a wake up and see how, where I'm at yeah. that day. Um, but I love I love when you're like you need to stop because yeah. I just, it's so fun. Oh my it's God. It's so fun to bother you. Yeah. Anyways. Okay. Um, I am a 21 year old uni student that listens to your podcast from Spain. Hello. Hello. I would Welcome. love to go to Spain. I've never been. I love when you guys, I've said this before, but I love when you guys tell us where you're from. Yeah. Tell us your age. If you're working, if you're in school, yeah. like I love details like that. It helps so much. Yeah. So thank you for sharing. Um, it's always so interesting too. Cause she says, so please excuse any grammar or spelling errors. And everyone who says that, that's from a different country, Excellent. the way that they write is better than I could ever. That's beautiful. <laughs> I yeah. could ever. I'm always like, should should you be speaking yeah. for this podcast? I'm like, that sounds correct. And the way I've been saying it for the past, like, however many years is not. <laughs> so I'm sure you'll be fine. Um, I have been listening. Oh, did I say her name was Laura? I don't think no, I said that didn't. yet. Her name is Laura. <laughs> I have been listening to you guys since you first started unsolicited advice. Wow. So I really feel like we've been through a lot together. Mm -hmm. I love that. <laughs> love that. Thanks for listening. You have literally been there for me, although virtually through a breakup, family issues, and even a freaking pandemic. That's so true. <laughs> that is so true. I'm so glad we started before, before that because I really feel like I know for me and I think you're the same. I bonded so much with our podcast and our like podcast family during that time mm -hmm. because it literally was helping me so much to like get yeah. through that time yeah i've said it before on the podcast and i'll say it again like you y'all got me through mm -hmm. covid Absolutely. and um we celebrated our one year during yeah. covid and i think because we were in a good routine like having this to look forward to every yeah. week and to like have fun with and like really share like how tra how traumatic of a time it actually <laughs> was with you guys yeah. was really therapeutic. No, so. I totally agree. I totally agree. It was, it helped us too. <laughs> yes, it was mutual. 
Um, I even, this is cool, I even ran my first ever 10K while listening to one of your episodes. So you can imagine how much this podcast means to me and how grateful I am for you both. Wait, what? Isn't that epic? That's next level from like listening to us at the gym. Yeah. 10K? A 10K. Listening to this voice? Yeah. To that voice? We are motivators. (laughs) (laughs) We were like, run girl, run. (laughs) We're just here to hype you up. Faster girl. Listen, if you yeah. need a <laughs> faster girl. Faster girl. Or we're just so mind numbing that she, <laughs> she was just like, <laughs> she literally, she puts us in and she just like zoned out. Yeah, zombie mode. <laughs> Didn't just even like, hear us talking. <laughs> we're just, <laughs> just, just, just chugging along. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, well. Oh, shoot. Um, okay. I don't want to make my already long story even longer, so I'll get straight into my dilemma. I am currently on my last year of university, only one month away from graduating and a teaching degree. Congratulations. Yay, yes. We love educators here. Well, I do. Do you? I absolutely okay, well. do. <laughs> I don't think I could be your friend and not love <laughs> <true>. educators. <laughs> well, and your mom too. I, yeah, I didn't think about that. Okay. I have known I want to devote my life to education ever since I was in secondary school, so I'm incredibly excited to start my work life soon. However, I am finding myself in a very conflicting situation. Very brief background. In Spain, you have to sit what we call a state exam in order to start working in public schools. This is a massive examination thousands of teachers take every two years, and if you get a good enough grade, you obtain a lifelong role in the education system. That's right, you get a place forever no one can fire you from unless you do something really messed up a fixed salary, and a good amount of free days per year. Truly as much security and stability as one can get in their life. That's really freaking cool, and I don't think that's f- the same here. No. I mean, I, I mean, know I, you can get... You would get, know, but I, I've never heard of that. I know you can get, like, tenure, right? which is, like, that you're set in that. But, but that's for professors. Yeah, and we do have to take exams here to, like, get your credential and all that stuff, but I don't know of... Uh, like your score sets you in mm. for life. Cause even some of my friends who are like such amazing talented teachers that I'm I would bet anything they got amazing scores. Like they still have to every few years like renew stuff and mm-hmm. interesting. Crazy. I wanna find out more about that. But yeah. That's cool. That's really cool. Um, it seems obvious that anyone would want to start preparing the for this exam right after they graduate to be able to pass as soon as possible and have their future set forever. However, my brain has recently been trying to lead me astray from this idea. I am for some reason convincing myself that taking that route would make me feel trapped and that I would have too many things I would want to experience before committing myself to my career forever. I want the freedom to travel, to meet new people, to learn about the world and to grow as a person, which I can't have if I spend the next two years of my life studying for a really hard examination Mm. and the following decades dedicating all my time to being a public school teacher. So my question is this, should I go with my gut and wait a few years until I attempt to enter the education system, or is this an extremely irresponsible idea? Should I choose work and financial stability over my desire to experience my youth for a little longer? Sorry for the, (laughs) she says the endless email, but it was not long at all. I hope it wasn't too boring and that I explained my situation clearly, and Literally any advice would be highly appreciated as the opinions I am getting from my loved ones are really mixed. And I respect your guys' perspective so much. Love, Laura. So many thoughts. I have so many thoughts, too. So many thoughts. Yeah. Um, oof. I, I understand both sides. I do think you need to sit down and figure out, like, what your priority is because everyone's different. If it's to, like get secure get a house like settle down whatever then the obvious route is the other if it's to travel then the obvious route is the other I personally though however think that if you have any desire whatsoever to travel it's now or never Mm -hmm. like and I don't mean never ever but the best possible time to travel is when you don't have a family or kids and you don't have that much financial financial (laughs) responsibilities and you know you haven't fully jumped into work yet. Like that's the best, best time to do it. Otherwise, realistically, it'll have to be like when you're on, uh, you know, your paid vacation from your job and that only gives you a couple of weeks and, or you might have kids and you have to wait 
till you're retired to fully dive into that life. Um, so if that's a desire for you or of yours whatsoever, then I would do that first and just like get it, experience it and get that done so that you can then focus on your career. Yeah. And I think also it depends on what your definition of travel is, because I, I traveled when I was like still in a full time job and I was still, you know, like very much involved in like life responsibilities Mm -hmm. and you know, I found a way to do that, whether it was taking off time or doing it on vacations or, you know, and even if it was just a week to go to like Greece or something, like I loved every minute of those trips and felt very satisfied when I came back. So it's, I think it depends on like what you think. And I feel like I will continue traveling forever because Mm -hmm. that's something that's important to me. So I, because I'm passionate about it, I make sure to make time in it. So, Mm -hmm. you know, like our friend just got married in Italy and I was like, I'm going to go. So I did what I had to do to like save money to, um, with my job, make sure I like covered everything I needed to, to be able to take that time off. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I'm going on vacation with my family to Hawaii. It's not like crazy far, but for me that satisfies that like traveling and, and seeing different places and, So I think it just depends on like what your definition is, because I think you very much can still do that in a steady job. Mm -hmm. Or like, what if you go spend two months in freaking some place and you study while you're there and like you take like certain days, maybe you study till like four and then you go out and explore or like, you know what I mean? So I think there's lots of ways where you could incorporate both. So if it's just the whole traveling aspect, I don't think you need to put your life on hold to do that unless you're wanting to do that in more of like a long-term capacity. Then then I do agree with Ash that it's probably going to be better to do it now. Now I will play devil's advocate because this is what happened to me. It is very hard to go from being in full-time education mode, taking a break, and then getting back in education Mm. mode. Yeah, I when I graduated, I was set to go straight into my master's program for psychology. Mm -hmm. I ended up taking like a few years off doing like different jobs or doing different things. When I tried to go back into it, I could not for the life of me do it because one, some of the courses that I had taken weren't accepted anymore. Yeah. Two some of the like requirements changed. So like one of my classes I got a C in, but they had bumped it to like, you had to have like a minimum of a B yeah. for it to be accepted. So when I came back, I was like, okay, not only am I gonna have to take like a full semester of like full class load before I can even get into my master's, but then I was just so out of that mindset mm-hmm. that I couldn't, I couldn't do it. And to and this you forget, day, you forget a lot of yeah. stuff that you have memorized at the time. Yeah. Like, or like study habits mm-hmm. or, you know, that mentality of like, oh, I have to like work on a paper and I'll be up till 4am doing it. Like you change so much in, in those next years of your life that I will say from my personal experience, I wish that I would have gone straight into it. Obviously, now in, in hindsight, like the way my life trajectory has gone, I don't regret anything, but I do see how hard that was for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's something I would consider. Like while, especially if this is a test where you want to get like a really high grade, you have all the knowledge very fresh in your mind. You have, you know, the the rhythm of being a full-time student in grained in you right now so it might be something where it's worth doing especially if it's something that covers you for the rest of your life because I mean you could take a year off like down the line if you wanted to after you've built up like that financial security and those connections and whatever so I think it's just something that I would really you know yourself Mm -hmm. so I would really just think about that like are you the type of person where you can see yourself getting caught in the flow of things and like losing that momentum Mm -hmm. or is school really simple for you? And you're like, "Ah, I'm not going to worry about that. I'll be able to like jump back in, you know? Yeah. Um, I was just Googling it and it, it, the, the statistics of students who take a break that actually come back the break, like it drops significantly after a break. Yeah. Um, but I took a break. Oh, it's totally doable. I work. It's totally doable. I like 
discovered myself, experienced life a little bit, dove back in. And did I have to retake a whole semester? Yes. Did I have to take a whole extra semester to build up to transfer to the four year? Yes. But also school wasn't my priority. Like I had no plan. I didn't know what I wanted to major in. I had no idea what career I wanted to go into. Had no idea it was going to be YouTube. That wasn't even an option back Mm -hmm. then. So like, I guess it's funny because I'm like, I feel like I'm reversing what I said earlier. Yeah. But you have a plan and you have a goal in mind. And there is actually a like, you could finish this by this date. And if I had had that, I feel like I would have finished school within a timely manner. Because again, it took me six years (laughs) because I took a break. Um, No, same. So I feel like if I had had some kind of plan, I would have finished school first or I would have preferred to have finished school first. Um, so that that was like, I could like check that box and mentally like move on from school. Um, that's just my thoughts. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think the reason I took my time and traveled a lot was because I had no plan and I didn't, I didn't care to have a plan yeah. necessarily. So I don't think you need to like, <clears throat> I don't think that the question is to travel or not to travel. I think like Taryn said, you can travel no matter what, as long as you make it a priority and you save accordingly. And um, and I, I think you can a thousand percent figure it out. I think um, it's a matter of like, is it easier for you to mentally get it all done at first? And, yeah. then, and then allow yourself to travel? Or are you okay with maybe things taking a little bit longer yeah. than it should have? You know, that's, that's something only you know. And I will say like with with education, the difference between going to school for education and actually stepping in and being a teacher and having your own classroom are night and day. Right. Like, yeah, they're both they both have difficulties that are difficult, but they're different. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I think like you keep using words like trapped or oh, I'm not gonna be able to meet new people or grow as a person and all these things. And I really I feel like you're having a very like this or that mentality. And I think with life, I it's very natural to feel like it's a like A or B scenario, mm-hmm. but it really isn't. Mm-hmm. And I mean, most of my friends who are in education, like we still like did life things. Like we yeah. still did stupid things and like hated our life on Monday going back because we stayed up till four, like going to stagecoach or whatever, you know? So it's not that like the second you get this job and this career, you lose your identity. Like it's actually the opposite. It's going to start to form who you are and you are going to meet new people through your job. Like a lot of us have friendships that are really solid because of work. Like Mm -hmm. I have a lot of friendships that I'm not even at that job anymore and we're still friends, but they came through a career. Mm -hmm. So I think that like a lot, there's a lot of opportunities there. And once you graduate and you get your, your stamp of approval from the government, you know, (laughs) like then you get to go in and you get to like have a class, you get to decide what your teaching style is going to be. You get to like decorate your classroom how you want. Like then it, then your creative fun side gets to come out. And then the best part is you get to have your kids and yeah. they're going to change you so much and impact you so much. So I think it's, I think you need to open your mind a little bit to that. I mean, one of the joys of teaching is you get breaks throughout the year. Like right? a lot of teachers get summers off or you have your full spring break. So if traveling is important to you. All of winter break. Yeah, that's it. You're planning your trip like all year because and summer hits and you're like, bye, off yeah. to like Germany or wherever you're going to go, you mm-hmm. know. So I think that there's a way to do both. But I think I think for you, you're feeling very overwhelmed. So I think you need to like take all pressure off and like imagine just dream of what like scenario could be if like everything went perfectly and like let yourself go there. And then you can start to like narrow in on like, oh, wow, this is actually not as important as I thought it was, you know, and a good plus to that of giving yourself a schedule like a teacher's schedule is you can book trips way in advance oh, yeah. so like if you're in your fall semester and you're planning for your summer you can book a really cheap flight from that time frame for summer by yeah. that time and then you're just budgeting the whole rest of the year for that trip so that you can go hard on that trip yeah. you know I just think in general it makes me sad when I hear people say like 
oh, like, oh, if I get married, life's over. Oh, you know, the second you have kids, yeah. like, no, forget about ever having. And I just Does it think, change like, things? Yes. Is it the end of the world? Yeah. No. But, like, you know, like, my sister and my brother, like, watching them, uh, sister-in-law and brother, because I was just going to yeah. say, clarify. Um, clarify. Watching them, like, Vanessa is obsessed with traveling. She loves traveling, and she loves Hawaii, because that's, like, where part of her culture is. And... This sec- I mean, Axel, before he even turned one, they went on their first trip to Hawaii. Mm-hmm. And they're constantly still out with friends. They're constantly doing stuff that, that makes them feel fulfilled as people and makes them their healthiest versions. Mm-hmm. And I just, like, I've loved watching that. And I love watching other people that, you know, they get married. And, yeah, their their priorities each other. But they're still out. They're still, like, having so much time with their friends. They're still, like, experiencing life. Like, just because you get in these positions whether it's you become a wife you become a full-time teacher you become a mom whatever it is that doesn't limit you to anything that's it's your experience Mm -hmm. so if things are important to you we'll work to make sure that you still have those in your life yeah so and I think we get so boxed in and that's where we feel like regret or what if like it gets too like overwhelming Mm -hmm. so I think you just need to open like stop putting all the pressures on yourself Take a second, think about what it could look like, and go from there. Yes and amen. Yeah, yes and amen. Perfect. Well, should we get into mine? Yes, let's do it. This one is titled, Should He Stay in the Friend Zone? I'm going to guess. Probably. For one, I'm going to go with no. Oh. You're going to say yes? I'm going to say the story, though. Uh, Oh, gosh. So I'm probably wrong. We'll see. We'll see. We don't know. Let's get into it. This one starts off, hello, unsolicited advice pod. (laughs) What up? If you are reading this, it is so surreal. I have always wanted to write in, but didn't think I had anything to say until today. I'm so excited to hear what you have to say about my situation. I respect the two of you so much. Every time I listen, it feels like I'm having brunch with my best friends. Oh, love that. So on to my situation. I am 20 years old. I am currently a junior in college studying design in Philadelphia, but I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. During this summer, 2023, I decided to go back to Puerto Rico since I got an internship position at a design firm here. Moving back home and leaving my friends was so hard, especially when I was just starting to feel like I was making real lifelong friendships in Mm. Philadelphia. That's That's so so hard. hard, That's so hard. Sorry. What I need advice on is precisely one of these friendships. Before I left, this guy friend mm -hmm, confessed he was starting to get feelings for me and wanted to explore a romantic relationship between us. Of course he did. Why do they always wait Mm -hmm. till right before? Oh, you're about to leave? I love you. (laughs) Even like church camp, like you're looking the whole time for your church camp romance. Oh, yeah. And then it's like the last worship night. You bought new shorts. You're wearing your new vans. Yeah. Trying to look all good. The last worship night, you're like, I give up. I didn't find him. And then freaking Kevin comes into your life. And then you're like, okay, we'll exchange info and never see each other again. (laughs) Yeah, bye. Cool. (laughs) But will I focus on like fantasizing about our life together (laughs) for the next... Five for months? the next year, yeah. yes, until absolutely. until uh, uh, until never, <laughs> till Ch- Chad comes around. Yeah. And I don't know the next guy. Ew, Chad. There's always another guy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she continues. It is important to note that we had only been friends for a month or so at this point when he said he was into me. I told him I wanted to explore a relationship between us since we got along so well, but that I was worried this would be useless since I would be moving. Um, back to PR for six months. I've never heard Puerto Rico. No, I'm, PR, I'm not going to lie for like sense. two seconds. I was like, yeah, what's for, that? I was like, as I was saying it, I was like, huh? <laughs> and he confessed this a few weeks before I left. No matter that fact, we decided to go out on some dates and kiss and such to explore the possibility. All while knowing that I was inevitably going to be moving away during the summer. After going out a couple of times, I decided I wasn't that into him and or into a relationship and just wanted to stay friends. I came to this conclusion after we kissed and honestly, I felt nothing. He accepted my feelings and we decided to stay friends anyways. We are three months into me being back home and we have texted every single day as friends. <laughs> And this is super confusing to me. I absolutely love having him in my life and appreciate our friendship so much. 
it makes me think that I actually do have romantic feelings for him. And while I do think he's attractive, I cannot envision us together physically. I remember what it was like to kiss him and there just were no sparks. So what I want advice on is what to do here. Should I explore a relationship between us, although I don't think I am actually physically attracted to him, but I do love having him in my life? Or do I preserve our friendship and not complicate things even more? I lean towards the, quote, stay as friends option, but I cannot get him out of my head. Anything that happens in my day, I want to share with him, but I stop myself from doing so because it feels too relationshipy. Yeah, I have intimacy issues. Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> please help me out sorry this was so long I wanted to give you as much information as possible she adds besties please please help me out here love anonymous ay, ay, ay. and then she adds in parentheses hee hee I'm an anonymous Aww. that's so cute anonymous so fam. cute so cute so many thoughts you know I feel like everybody always you know, gets on me when I say, I think it's very rare that you can have a successful friendship with the opposite sex or the opposite of what you're interested in or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, but I think that the line between caring about someone, just caring about them as a person and caring about them in a romantic way can get very, very confusing Mm -hmm. when it's a guy because you you're seeking you want that affirmation from a guy you want that like feeling of having someone that's like checking in on you yes. and and you can sit and watch movies and cuddle and it's very hard to be in a close friendship like that and not at least have those thoughts of <coughs> I just choked on my spit sorry <laughs> at least have those thoughts of Wait, is this something? Is yes. this not something? Like, it's just impossible. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for one of you. Right. For one of you. Usually, someone catches someone, feelings. Someone has at least considered it. Has thought about it. Yeah. Yep. Um, I will say, my initial thought is, if you're hung up on just, I didn't feel anything in the kiss, kiss him again. See if anything's changed. Yeah. Um, because at this point, I don't really think you like investing in this friendship, if it is just going to be a friendship, is going to be a valuable use of your time. Right. Because you can't keep Given doing this. Yes. Because I, I mean, you haven't mentioned like how what he said he feels, but if you're the one who told him, hey, I just think of you as a friend and he still is coming around. I th This guy's obviously like into you because that's mm -hmm. a hit on your pride for right. sure. For sure. So I think that you should just give it one more try. Like I would even just tell him, be like, look, we keep dancing around this thing. So let's just like, let's go on a, a date. You plan the date. Just tell me like when to be ready. Come pick me up. And we're just for this full 24 hours, we're just going to give it our all. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of that, we can just discuss like how we're feeling and either for real to just feel like we're just friends or we can explore something. Yeah. And I would give it one more try. And then from there, I would start to build some boundaries because he deserves a chance to like move on and find someone sure. and you deserve a chance to move on and find someone. And you might just really be de desiring relationship and he just happens to be the nearest thing that's like fulfilling some of that, you know? Yeah. Um, two things I want to say. First off, you, I mean, obviously you have to see what resonates with you, but I do think that over time people can grow on you. Yeah. And I do think that sometimes it's that like lack of them being there when you realize you miss them. Yes. You know, yeah. like sometimes you're like, Oh, I'm not that into it. I'm not that into it. And then you move away to Puerto Rico and all of a sudden you can't stop thinking about him and you are daydreaming about him and you're fantasizing about him because you miss him. And that's a huge possibility of what could be happening. If that resonates with you, then give it a shot. Because yeah. obviously he's on your mind. You might as well. Yeah. You might as well see it through. And just so you know in the future that you gave it a shot. The other thing is one of the reasons um, or one of the things kind of like an unspoken rule that I had when I was dating was I, I hated 
to talk to text for too long before actually going on a date with them to see if I liked them because having that good morning gorgeous text is freaking addicting. Like it yeah. feels great for someone to be like, how was your day, cutie? Like that's intoxicating yeah. and it's easy to to uh, depend on that without actually entering into a relationship um, and maybe letting it go on for too long because you just enjoy the company, I guess, isn't how I want to word it. Yeah. Um, so I think just check with yourself and see if you are loving the attention and you're loving the companionship in that kind of uh, area um, more than actually him. Because if you're saying that you're not attracted to him and you did go out for a couple months, that's also saying something. So I think you need to sit with yourself and see which one of those feels like your situation and then react accordingly yeah because i mean the thing is is if you have an area of your life that you have a desire or you feel like you're lacking you can easily attach a person's face mm -hmm. to the cover of that when mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with them yeah i'm telling you right now homegirl i'm talking about myself <laughs> Uh, she she wants a bed. She wants she wants the relationship bad, right? Yeah. Like she she's ready. Mm -hmm. She's ready. Mm -hmm. So if a guy comes in my life and is like just saying sweet nothings to me and yeah. is like investing in me, even if I'm like I see zero future with you, yeah. will I milk that for a little bit? Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, line secure. Yes. Yes. But I think it 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 is something that I would have to make sure. I'm not like hurting someone. Taking advantage of. Yeah. Yes. If if it's a guy who's just like, yeah, I don't want a commitment, but like this is just like I'm I'm lonely, you're lonely, let's mm -hmm. hang out sometimes. Mm -hmm. Then I can enter into that at my own risk. Yeah, but this guy. But this guy seems like a genuinely dope guy well, that said you he's care really about. Into her. Yeah. So I think it's I think this is where you have to decide if you really care about him as a friend then you're not going to want to like lead him on or sometimes you have to cut off a friendship even though you don't want to, but you know it's the best thing for the other person. Mm -hmm. So I think I think that's what I'm saying. If it's just the kiss, if that's the only thing that's holding you back, then just I think you both owe it to each other to just try one more time and then you know. But if you decide it's a no, it needs to be – made very clear to him and you need to be careful how you're acting with him yeah you can't go over to his house and watch movies till 4 a.m laying on his lap like yeah. that's not fair yeah so i think it just depends on like where you fall definitely but don't lay on his lap no <laughs> that's an outgo <laughs> uh but i just think that like sometimes we need to be aware that we could be the person that is creating damage for another person a thousand percent and we all know how it feels to have that re oh, so, <laughs> resonating so damage yeah and i never want to be the cause of that for someone else so yeah. that might mean sometimes i have to make really hard decisions yeah because i care about that other person yeah so i think you just need to weigh it out if you feel like you're forcing yourself to get into something then he's not your person mm -hmm. and it's okay to like take a step back and to like find something else but he might be sad for today but now that he has the clarity to like yeah. actually open his eyes and look around him He'll he find might someone. find his person yeah. you know so i just think you need to like really think about all the factors either give it one more go and then decide from there or part ways if you already know the answer in your gut. A thousand you know? percent. I had the exact same thing happen to me with a friend of mine that I went to school with. And every time he moved far away and every time I was out there, I would want to visit him or every time he was out here, he would want to visit. And so we would. And it oh, like, sorry, I was trying to think who it was, but I'm, I'm there. Got it. Yeah, I'm there. I'm caught up. Okay. Um, and so we would because I genuinely like enjoyed him. Like we just like yeah. fit each other so well. Yeah. And um, we got along so well, same humor, like we were both just so chill and it was so easy to hang out with him. Um, and I could tell at a certain point that it felt very uh, relationshipy, but yeah. then he, he, he moved and nothing ever came of it. And I like created space, obviously, but then every time I was out there, I would reach out. Yeah. And then one of the last times I was out there, he finally opened up about having feelings and I had to like check myself and be like, okay, well every time you're out there, Ashley, like you text him and you mm -hmm. go see him and that's not fair. And so I had, I had to 
cut that friendship off a little yeah. bit? Do we still text a, or message every once in a while? Yeah. And I'm so glad that we can like um, still be friends in that way. But like he's dating someone, I'm dating someone and I don't I don't do what I used to do. I was going to say you gave a lot of space and you minimized a lot. Yeah. But I remember even you at that time, you had this whole like, I don't know. So I remember on the last trip, I was like, just let yourself mentally go there. Like, could you see potential? Yeah. And at the end of the day, you were like, I don't. And then you changed the way you acted with him, which is yeah. out of respect for him. Because you could have continued love, I, that. Yeah. I, he's a great guy and he deserved to not be um, dragged along. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In that way. And um, and it's and it's so great now because like. I, I liked a picture of him and his girlfriend the other day. They were traveling somewhere. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. looks fun. And, like, yeah. it's easy. It's chill. And it's defined. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We love boundaries. Boundaries. They're and healthy. Yes. I highly – I hope that if that's what ends up happening to you, I hope that you can do it in a way where you can um, still, like, follow each other and track yeah, along with yeah. their, their life, his life. Yeah. Oof. Good stuff. Yeah. I love I love digging into relationship things like that. It's uh-huh. so fun for me. It's uh-huh. so fun. Um, thank you so much for our two wonderful authors that wrote in mm-hmm. today. Our listeners, um, our writers. If you're listening and you have a situation in your life, it can be something really small. It can be something big. If you want to write in just like a sentence of like, my boss did this and it made me feel like this. What should I do? Yeah. Like anything, anything works. So yes. send in all your stuff, whether it's work, family, friends, relationship, personal, health, all the things. Do um, it. Don't wait. Send it in now. This is your sign. We could solve all of your problems. From God. God is sending you a sign. Oh, I was like, are we God? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> get struck by lightning. <laughs> um, yeah, but we love you guys so much and we're so excited to... Um, just be like a tiny, tiny part of your journeys. Hmm. Hmm. Want to take us out with a dad joke, Karen? I would love to. Okay, I'm excited. Someone DM'd me a dad joke, and I'm not joking. I like laughed out loud, which usually I chuckle, but this one I actually was like, oh my gosh, that's so good. Really? Yes. Okay, I found it. Ready? Yes, <laughs> ma'am. Um, I don't. I didn't ask her if I could like say her name on here, but Rena, if you're listening to this, this dad Shout jokes, out to you. This dad joke's from you, and I appreciated it. Um, why couldn't the green pepper practice archery? Green pepper, pepper, spice. <laughs> Peppers. Sounds so good. I don't know. Because it didn't habanero. Ah, uh, damn it. That is great. That's a good one. <laughs> habanero. That's a really good one. Oh. Habanero. She sent this and said, Dad joke for the dad joke queen. Mm -hmm. Thank Mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Guys, you already know the drill if you made it to the dad joke. We love you the mostest. Like Taryn said, please take the time to send in your stories, your situations, or funny stories for Taryn It Ups. Mm -hmm. We love, we love to laugh with you, cry with you, live life with you. Um, So send those in and we'll talk to you in the next episode coming soon. Yes. Love you. Bye. Bye.